The LMS-901 Baikal Light Multipurpose Aircraft Project, which was developed as a replacement for the legendary AN-2 Kukuruznik, is not in fact closed, as reported by recent press reports. The initiative would not be frozen, according to the Ministry of Industry and Trade, MinPromTorg. However, they did not provide any additional information. In response to questions regarding the potential suspension or transfer of the project from Ural Civil Aviation Plant to the S-7 Group, the ministry replied, the project will not be frozen. The aircraft's design had been the subject of numerous dramatic errors, according to the newspaper Commerçant, which cited its own sources. The Baikal was developed as a replacement for the AN-2, which was aging, in order to serve regional aviation. The wingspan of the aircraft is 16.5 meters, and it is 12.2 meters in length and 3.7 meters in height. It has a maximum takeoff weight of 4.8 tons, a maximum flight range of 3,000 kilometers, and a peak speed of up to 300 kilometers per hour. It is capable of transporting cargo of up to 2 tons and 9 passengers. The initial production aircraft were initially scheduled for delivery in 2026. In light of the ongoing issues with Baikal, MinPromTorg is contemplating re-engining the AN-2, according to Commerçant. The newspaper was informed by numerous industry sources, including those who are affiliated with the Ural Civil Aviation Plant, that Baikal's fate has not yet been decided. It was announced in the autumn that deliveries would be postponed until 2026. Nevertheless, Commerçant's sources indicate that the aircraft necessitates structural modifications that could potentially require three to five years to complete. A source close to MinPromTorg claimed that several dramatic mistakes in the aircraft's design, which have only now fully come to light, were made during development. The aircraft essentially needs to be rebuilt from scratch. This source, along with three others, noted issues such as instability at low speeds, high control stick forces, the need to enlarge the tail assembly, the need to relocate the tail wheel, and the need to redesign the landing gear. The Ural plant has requested additional funding from the ministry for modifications, according to two sources. One source estimated the amount at approximately 10 billion rubles. It is still uncertain whether this funding has been approved. The Baikal program could be shut down without major consequences once an alternative solution is found, according to a source close to the Ministry of Transport. The source speculated that the factory may be permitted to concentrate on TVRS-44 Ladoga and the Russian-Belarusian project of LMS-192 Osve, while the AN-2 remains operational until a replacement is available. According to a source affiliated with MinPromTorg, the program may not be entirely terminated, but rather transferred to S7 Group. A ministry meeting was held at the end of December to address the possibility of this transfer. Commerçant submitted a request for a remark to S7. Yuri Trutnev's office, which had proposed finding another contractor for Baikal, redirected inquiries to MinPromTorg. Neither MinPromTorg nor the Ural plant confirmed whether work on Baikal will continue. MinPromTorg has assigned the United Engine Corporation, a subsidiary of Rostec, the responsibility of resuming the production of the TVD-10B engine for the AN-2, reports Commerçant. According to reliable sources, this endeavor will necessitate approximately 1.8 billion rubles. Work on the TVD-10B was confirmed by a source close to Rostec. However, neither Rostec nor United Engines issued official statements. The Soviet-designed TVD-10B turboprop engine was developed in Omsk in 1965 and originally used for the AN-28. The VK-800, which was manufactured by the Ural plant, was intended to replace it. However, the timeline for its mass production remains uncertain, according to sources. Subsequently, the UEC Saturn branch in Omsk resolved to resume TV-10 production. Vladimir Barsuk, the current director of Sibnaye and the current developer of the AN-2, informed Commerçant that the institute is investigating the feasibility of installing the TVD-10B engines that are already available on the AN-2 until full production in Omsk resumes, which could take 1.5 to 2 years. The Comprehensive Aviation Industry Development Program included a meeting in late September with Yuri Trutnev, the presidential envoy to the Far Eastern Federal District, to address the issue of the Baikal project's viability 
and the search for an interim solution. The protocol of the meeting assigned MinPromTorg the responsibility of evaluating funding options for the re-engineering of the TVS-2MS, a modified AN-2 aircraft developed by Rusavia Prom with an American engine. If the engines are substituted with domestic ones, the aircraft will be included in the Comprehensive Aviation Industry Development Program. Alexei Krukov, CEO of Rusavia Prom, said to Commerceant that no decision has been made regarding the aircraft's inclusion in the program or the funding. A government-affiliated source clarified that these matters would only be addressed after it was determined whether the AN-2 could continue to be used for passenger service. Rosaviazia was directed to certify the AN-2 by the conclusion of 2024 and the TVS-2MS in the first quarter of 2025 in accordance with Trutnev's meeting protocol. At present, the aircraft is only being certified for agricultural and cargo transport, a decision that has been met with outspoken opposition from AN-2 operators. Now, do you think Russia should modernize and evolve AN-2 instead of Baikal project? Let us know in the comments. Please like and share our videos and subscribe to our channel. Please also take membership in our channel to encourage us.